Welcome to Chai with Manju. Our special guest today is one of the most accomplished violinist and vocalist in Carnatic tradition. She is also one of the most beloved and sought after teachers in New England. Her music has been beautifully described as chaste classicism. She is the founder of Anubhava School of Music and the recipient of Lifetime Achievement Award 2019. Let us meet Tara Anand. Tara ji, Namaste. Namaste Manjuji. Welcome to the show. Thank you Thank so much you for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you. And a very warm Namaste to all the viewers and to the whole Indian American community of New England. Thank you. Thank we you. We are so honored to have you here. So honored to have you Thank here. Thank you very much. And congratulations about the Lifetime Award as well. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I owe you thanks. I owe India New England thanks because, I like I said, my gratitude for recognizing a very niche, mm -hmm. very special area of Carnatic music by recognizing me. So yes. it's, I'm very honored on behalf of all my teachers and of the Carnatic music community. Thank and you. 30 years this year yes. since Anubhava school started, right? Yes. It's amazing. That's yes. amazing. So let's track your journey a little bit. Mm -hmm. You were born in Indore, raised in Delhi, yes. went to one of my favorite colleges, Lady Sri Ram, and yes. then moved to Chennai and yes. finished with masters in English. And at the same time, you started learning music at the age of four. Yes. And uh, vocal at four and violin at eight. So your journey has been very interesting. What made you decide as music as your career choice? <laughs> I think the person who started it all was my father. Okay. It was his passion. Uh -huh. He was not a Carnatic musician. Okay. But he just loved Carnatic music at some point later in his life. Uh -huh. He himself started learning Mardangam. Wow. And he actually started taking lessons mm -hmm. and he became a Bihai artist himself in wow. All India Radio. Okay. So it was strictly a passion for him. Uh -huh. And somewhere he had made up his mind, I think, that I want my children to learn this. Wow. He didn't know, know how talented we were or anything, okay. but he had decided uh -huh. that he would put most of his money and his passion into oh. training us. That's wonderful. So he started me even before mm -hmm. four. Uh -huh. I remember learning like three and a half years wow. old. Mm -hmm. There was a teacher in Mumbai because at that time, before we settled in Delhi, uh -huh. Appa had a traveling job. Okay. He worked for Hindustan Leva okay. and he was a sales manager. Okay. So hence indoor and uh -huh. then Calcutta, <laughs> Calcutta for a bit. Yes. <laughs> and apparently I spoke fluent Bengali for the okay. first two years of my life, but I don't remember anything now. <laughs> and uh, so he finally traveled all over and we settled okay. in Delhi. Okay. By the time I was in about first grade. Okay. So since then it's been Delhi. Okay. So I started learning in Mumbai during one of his travel things. Okay. About three and a half or so. Wow. And um, it was primarily him, you know, okay. because I would still say, and I say this to the parents of my students too, mm -hmm. when you're three and four and five, you really don't know Absolutely. what it is you want to do. That is so true. And uh, for the first 10 years of your life, you end uh -huh. up doing what your parents want you to do. That could be right. music, dance, uh -huh. everything, Kumon, RSM, everything. But you do it because <laughs> yes. your yes. parents ask you to yes. do it. So it was completely my father. Okay. And so then he made sure that once we were in Delhi, that music was a top priority. Okay. Uh, in addition to academics, that was the only thing I did Okay. was wow. music. Wow. Three, four times a week would be my music class vocal. And then once I started my violin, then that would also be three, four oh times goodness. a week. I started performing early. Uh -huh. um, once I started violin, I started touring. In fact, he's one of my mentors, Vidwan T.R. Subramaniam. He's one of the top-notch professionals okay. in Delhi at that time. Okay. And I traveled with him at a very young age for a tour. Okay. So I think I started performing, and in a way, that took a life of its own. Yes. And that became my journey. Yeah. And what a yeah. gift. What a gift and what a legacy. Yeah. Okay. And you've had some truly amazing gurus. You call them your mentors. So yes. share with our audience something that about your gurus as well, how they have shaped your life. Yes. So the thing about having gurus is sometimes mm -hmm. it takes you 
growing older and wiser to realize how wonderful they were. Mm -hmm. Because, okay. and there's some of my students too, who probably uh -huh. can only think of me as a teacher who insists on practice uh -huh. and who yells at them <laughs> if they don't I practice. I doubt that. <laughs> but, uh -huh. but it, you know, it was a strict time. Uh -huh. So, but some of these teachers, um, mm -hmm. I knew all along that they had extreme dedication, okay. extreme dedication. Mm -hmm. They're never once canceling class or, the, my first teacher, Shankar Sharma, would actually come home and teach. Wow. He drove, I mean, mm -hmm. he rode on his little moped <laughs> to students' houses in the wow. Delhi heat. Wow. And he taught. So he came three or four times a week. Wow. And then even S. Gopalakrishnan sir would come home and teach. Mm -hmm. For my violin teacher, Vedavali Ramaswamy, I went myself okay. um, and learned. But I think for me, what stood out in all of them mm -hmm. was that they were completely dedicated and persevering teachers. Okay. They were not out to look out for mm -hmm. themselves. Okay. For again, it was not about them. Mm -hmm. They were performing artists. Mm -hmm. They had. They were radio artists. They were. Right. Um, my guru Sri S. Gopal Krishnan sir was a Vadya Vrinda head okay. in All India Radio. Wow. He was brilliant. Wow. So they had their careers, uh -huh. but when they gave, uh -huh. they gave like. They really didn't care about themselves. It was only about me. Okay. And so even oh. today, when I, um, it brings tears to my eyes when people tell me that mm -hmm. you, when they say anything about me, I say it's not me. Mm -hmm. Because I do firmly believe that you mm -hmm. are taught, you teach the way you're taught. Right. If right. you're taught badly, you become, you okay. don't know how to teach. You, if you've been taught badly, mm -hmm. you will just transmit the same thing to your students. But right. I was so fortunate mm -hmm. because they were such great teachers mm -hmm. that it is just them that I am just a wow. uh, vehicle. Mm -hmm. Talking so. of students, you know, your students have consistently won awards at Cleveland, at the prestigious, of course, Cleveland Tyagraj Aradna, and you were voted the best teacher there as well. So, you know, as, and I have talked to some of your um, students and they really adore you. So what is your, what is the secret of your success? I think my only secret is, is sticking to that okay. root tradition, mm -hmm. is trying to impart what I know okay. to the best of my ability, mm -hmm. but keeping in mind that every single child is different. Right. So right. every single child needs a different approach. Every child might not reach point B at the same mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. Some might reach it in two months. Mm -hmm. Some might take a year. Mm -hmm. Some might take two years. Mm -hmm. As long as the parents have the patience, okay. my duty is to make sure that they reach the best of their individual potential. Yes. I think that's what I do, if at all, mm -hmm. that brings out the best mm -hmm. in every child that comes to Anubhava. That's I hope. wonderful. It's as I'm listening to you and talking about your gurus and how you teach, how is your style different from your gurus? So the only way I would say that my uh -huh. style was different, okay. is different, uh -huh. is probably because I'm in a different environment okay. and I am also catering to yes. a totally different right. generation in a foreign country, right. which is now our country. Yes. But just mm -hmm. to keep in mind that they need the music needs to be an expression of themselves so right. while i make them a mm -hmm. musician mm -hmm. i try not mm -hmm. to make them clones of tara right right i like that <laughs> i ground them uh -huh. i keep guiding them so okay. if they are off the path or something sounds wrong i correct them okay. i let them make mistakes when they create okay and out comes their own little you know creative yeah. genie yeah. and that is what is different I think uh -huh. is what everybody would say about my students okay. is that you can listen to 10 of my senior students okay. singing the same thing okay each would sound a little bit different That's wonderful okay now you teach both uh, vocal music as well as violin how is the style of teaching and what is the difference between the two does your mindset change when you're going from one to another Yes, and okay. that is a very wonderful question to ask because mm -hmm. this is what I tell my students every okay. time. And some of them who do both. Okay. 
that can be confusing. <laughs> right. Um, I think it is a big asset to be a vocalist first, which I thank my stars I was. Okay. Because then thinking as a vocalist is most important, even for an instrument. Because right. unless you want, you know the song mm -hmm. and the words, mm -hmm. and expressing the words, right. that same expression will not come out on the mm -hmm. instrument. Right. However, if you're just an instrumentalist, mm -hmm. you can do a few other stunty things. Okay. You can I do like some stunts stunt. on an instrument. You can. <laughs> the same things might not sound so good on the vocal. Okay. So even when I teach the same song, uh -huh. my versions mm -hmm. for the two will be different. Okay. Because I have a vocal version which okay. will capitalize on uh -huh. what a vocal voice mm -hmm. can capture, which is the feeling. Again, right. the feeling of it. Anubhava. Yes. <laughs> Always gets back to that. Uh -huh. And then if it's an instrument, how mm -hmm. to make that bright and how to right. make an instrument sound scintillating. You know, so then you have to add a few more, mm -hmm. a few more touches okay. that might not necessarily be there in the vocal. So okay. they are totally different mindsets. Mm. And even to my students who do both, mm. I always tell them, you have to think as a vocalist mm -hmm. when you're singing. And when you're playing an instrument, you have to think like an okay. instrumentalist. And that, okay. yes, perfect is the mindset has to be. Okay. It's tough. It's yeah. tough to do, especially if you favor one or the other, <laughs> then it's tough. Okay. Yeah. And do you favor one over the other? Um, no. <laughs> no. No. I love both. Okay. I love both. It mm -hmm. is hard to keep up with practicing both. Uh -huh. And the reason I also started doing more violin in Chennai after the initial vocal okay. was because violin was always more in demand. Okay. Because there is a dearth. Okay. of good accompanists and yes. you must have seen a Carnatic yes. ensemble yes it always has a violinist isn't yes. it so the it's a vocalist violinist uh -huh. and rhythmist at a minimum right. Right. and it was hugely in demand okay and there were very few accompanists so it okay. just like it, it took a life of its own okay and <laughs> now violin yeah. of course is also very popular in the western classical yes. music so your students who actually learn Carnatic in the Carnatic tradition and if they want to transition into the Western music are they able to utilize the training that you know they've had from you are they able to do fusion music or how is it how does it all come together for them okay so I do believe that mm -hmm. Indian classical music mm -hmm. be it Hindustani or right. Carnatic mm -hmm. it's an extremely sound system mm -hmm. it's it if you learn it well properly from the mm -hmm. right person uh -huh. it grounds you okay. it really grounds you well okay and if you can do that you can mm -hmm. pretty much do anything mm -hmm. so yes i mm -hmm. don't think they will have a problem mm -hmm. with transitioning to western classical music the slight problem i see is indian music has gamakams what we call gamakams which is okay. notes are not necessarily flat right. there's a lot of moving notes right. and if at all there would be some unlearning there to do mm -hmm. if you switch switch to western music okay but I think for a student who does mm -hmm. um, a Western, because it's basically the mm -hmm. same violin that right. was adapted into Carnatic right. music because okay. they found that it was the closest to vocal. Okay. Like to reproduce the continuity mm -hmm. of a vocal voice, mm -hmm. the violin was the best. So they just okay. latched on. Before that, it was a veena. Before okay. the violin came on the Carnatic scene, it was a veena that okay. was okay. prominent and used for accompaniment. Mm -hmm. So I think the way this becomes an asset is for any child who has learned mm -hmm. Carnatic classical or mm -hmm. when they go out into the world and today's world has a lot of fusion music right that right. is where it is precious because okay. there is not much thinking a good okay. student has to do they can just mm -hmm. go right away mm -hmm. join a group and they'll write beat there was no there's no struggle there's no later struggle you know it okay. just lends itself to future learning mm -hmm. and mixing of music and mm -hmm. and that's why mm -hmm. classical music is classical music it yes. is just it rains because it is simply rooted right and so rooted in classicism and in good training and discipline that once you've had that mm -hmm. nothing else seems hard now what do you think about online teaching with skype and uh, various facetime etc what is your opinion on that um my opinion on that is it uh -huh. is not good at all for basic training okay only because i think okay. mm -hmm. i mean i could be wrong uh -huh. um, i i don't i mean this is the first time i'm expressing my opinion and <laughs> saying not good but um i think what you need when you're learning especially uh -huh. with carnatic music okay. that is thalam there okay. is a physical manifestation of thalam right. right with skype 
Mm -hmm. Any face time, there's always a lag in rhythm. Okay. Right? There's always a lag. Okay. You're not going at the same time. Okay. You're not teaching the student right. the beat. That beat comes a second later. Right. So right. for basic training, I would certainly do dissuade parents, if they're serious, okay. from mm -hmm. Skype. Mm -hmm. Where Skype works, definitely, mm -hmm. is for advanced learning. Okay. So if a student is, okay. my, some of my advanced students uh -huh. who have gone to college, uh -huh. they learn on Skype. I have no problem teaching them okay. because I know okay. that they know the basics. Right. So okay. I'm not going to have to tell them this beat is going off here or this is here, okay. this is there. Okay. They are at a stage where they can just listen and learn. Okay. Now tell us a little bit about your family. We know you're married to Anand and your son yes. Tarun is here. Yes. So is Shalaja. We have live audience today. Yes, we do. <laughs> so and uh, apart from Anand and Tarun, of course, Shalaja has been the most okay. uh, predominant part mm -hmm. of Anubhava. Uh -huh. um, she's been teaching with me now. She takes all mm -hmm. the really tiny students. My husband, um, thankfully, mm -hmm. has, uh, is not into music. And I say that because I think it is a gift for uh -huh. an artist okay. to have a spouse or a mm -hmm. partner who, is, who understands what you're doing, respects uh -huh. what you're doing, at the uh -huh. same time does not do the same thing because emotionally <laughs> right. they're able to keep you yes. grounded. And so he's been incredible. And then my son, who is mm -hmm. a Mridangist himself, okay. and Wonderful. Uh, uh, whatever mm -hmm. little debt he might owe me in terms of, <laughs> you know, exposing him to this music uh -huh. and making him love it, he loves it. Mm -hmm. He has repaid that a hundredfold by <laughs> re-inspiring me and we have a great time listening to music together yeah. and he's a real boon okay. in my journey. Now, yes. what else does uh, Tara do for fun? I read an old interview that you wanted to learn dance and karaoke. Yeah, now. so uh -huh. I have, so I always loved dance, uh -huh. loved it. The Bollywood dance though. Uh -huh. I learned Kathak for two years in Delhi. Very nice. Yeah, and on my Chennai, when I once moved to Chennai, I did learn Bharatanatyam, just for okay. passion. I just love okay. it. I love dancing. I love Hindi film music. Okay. Uh, but I'm, I'm kind of stuck in the 60s and 70s <laughs> music. I, I haven't come out of that yet. Those are the melodies I listen to. Opi Nair is my okay. favorite. Uh -huh. And I love singing karaoke. And Very I, nice. I'm a Vivid Bharti girl, you know. Of course, so we all are. We, we date ourselves. Are, absolutely. <laughs> so, um, you know, I love to do, I love all forms of music. And I just enjoy uh, being cosmopolitan and part yes. of that is growing up in Delhi. I want to hear a Bollywood song from you one day. Uh, definitely. <laughs> Do you want to sing definitely. Uh, something for our audience today? Just a couple of lines of anything you feel like today. What would you like to hear? A shocker of a Bollywood song? Yes. <laughs> that would make my day. Uh -huh. <laughs> mm. Mm. Chandan Sabadan oh, wow. Chan Chal Chitvan Dere Se Tera Ye Muskana Chandan Sabadan Chan Chal Chitvan Dere Se Tera Ye Muskana मुझे दोष न देना जग वालों मुझे दोष न देना जग वालों हो जाऊं अगर मैं दीवाना चंदन साबदन चंचल चितवन Oh my God that is just brought back I memories. Have, I have no I don't, questions after that. I don't practice this that. anymore. So <laughs> I'm very rusty, but I, I love can, karaoke. I can yeah. see bahut log aapke divane isliye. I just, you know, I just love so it. Like I said, I, I didn't fantastic. come out of that time period at all. Yes, and you so. shouldn't. If this is perfection, we need to stay there. <laughs> and on that note, we are feeling so privileged. We are so happy, and so looking forward to honor you on May 17th, Women of the Year, with this year's Lifetime Achievement Award. And may God send all the blessings to you. Yeah, I'm extremely you so humbled, Manjuji. Thank you so, Thank much. You so Thank much. much. Very, Thank very you. humble.